Well, there are no more episodes to look at this season. It's pretty much done, and there won't be more episodes until much later. Well, depending. We'll, we'll have to wait and see if there will be more episodes. But at this point, what do I do? Do I just look into the entire season in general and just make one big review out of it? Time to get things started! <laughs> This is Animat and welcome back to the Muppet Vlog and this time we are doing an entire season review of the 2015 series of the Muppets or if ABC decided not to renew this well then uh, this would pretty much count as the series review I don't know we'll just have to wait and see how it goes uh, the only thing I'll have to do is just change the title of this and that would be pretty much it but anyways like I said we are going to be looking into the first season of the Muppets and this one is actually rather interesting what they decided to do with it basically it is like the other Muppet shows but it's set in a more contemporary uh, setting the concepts is pretty much similar to the other Muppet shows where it's the Muppets and they're trying to you know put up a show and stuff like that but this time they are pretty much organizing to do a uh, talk show where the star is Miss Piggy and stuff like that but instead of making it as a variety show, they pretty much set it as like a mockumentary comedy series in the same veins of like The Office and Modern Family and stuff like that. So we do get more of the behind the scenes look into the characters, including uh, Kermit, Fozzie, Miss Piggy, Gonzo, and the rest of the Muppet gang, like how they are in their work and also in their uh, personal lives and stuff like that so we do get a bit of a behind the scenes onto that now the one thing i would like to start to mention is regarding that it has a more adult tone but maybe a lot of critics say that it's a more adult tone that they are not used to with the muppets um and i will admit yeah it is like it is more adult ish considering that like some of the themes they actually get into is a bit more adult like they don't talk about kids stuff this is clearly not necessarily a kids show this is more of like a general audience kind of show like this is you know this is like the modern families and the uh the offices and stuff like that this is like more al among their lines considering that they do talk about stuff like work and relationships and you know like all those personal matters and stuff like that and considering that a lot of the characters like they did have a bit of an adult tone to them like uh, you would often see the electric mayhem do some uh, you know do some drug references there are some hidden gay jokes here and there and um, and sometimes it can have a bit of sexual innuendos especially when they have like Pepe and Rizzo uh, act out more like swingers and like always plotting to get out and pick up some chicks and stuff like that um, Honestly, it doesn't necessarily bother me too much. It's not that bad of a thing like it, it still holds up a bit of the spirit of the Muppets and stuff like that like yeah, it's a bit more adult, but you know it definitely is still funny and I think that's definitely one of the strongest points of the series is that it is still funny the jokes do work no matter what like yeah maybe there are a few misses here and there but generally um in each episode i do get a good laugh it is highly enjoyable yeah despite like some characters acting out more adult like they are still the characters themselves you still see uh the same ones that i that everybody has grown up with like the electric mayhem is still the electric mayhem fozzy bear is still fozzy bear Gonzo is still Gonzo, Miss Piggy is Miss Piggy, and Kermit is still Kermit. Well, almost, I would say. Because out of all the criticisms that I've seen, the biggest one that always made everybody mad is actually regarding Kermit. And they say that he has changed and he feels more mean-spirited and stuff like that. And a lot of people have been hating on the show mostly due to Kermit considering that he seems more aggressive in a way. And honestly, I'm not going to deny that he seems more aggressive, but let me tell you a little bit something. 
Um, how long has it been since you've seen the original Muppet Show? Because the thing is, everybody has been saying that, Oh, this is not the Kermit that I remember. This is not the Kermit that I used to watch. Well, yeah. Like, have you seen the, orig the original Muppet Show? I mean, like, recently? Like, not too long ago? Because I have. And it's actually very interesting to see the difference between the Kermit that we have in the 2015 series and the Kermit in the original Muppet Show. Now, Kermit in the original series, the one thing I notice is that he seems a bit of a pushover. And that's kind of one of the biggest things that, like, is, is kind of a bit of a turnoff in terms of the original show, is that, like, everybody seems to be, like, aggressive towards Kermit because they want to do their act onto the show like no matter what they always threat like they always threaten Kermit that they would either leave the show that like they they want to take affirmative action that you know and like Scooter often does it the most that like his uncle owns the theater and stuff like that like they always do that assertive thing that the, like they they would often leave Kermit to have no choice and like let them do whatever they want in order to have the show go on and stuff like that so that was basically the biggest thing in the original Muppet show Kermit was just kind of a pushover now in the 2015 series this Kermit yes he's a lot more aggressive but now he's doing his freaking job he is not going to let anyone step in his way he is the producer of the show and he lets everyone know it and like whenever they would like whenever like people would suggest him stupid ideas he will say either yes or no and that will be the action and that's kind of the big difference and plus the fact that everybody's been saying like oh this is not the kermit that they remember i still see the same kermit like ever like that i grew up this is still a bit of the same kermit and this is mostly through his intentions and stuff like that you can still tell that Kermit still wants to put on a great show. You could still tell that he loves doing what he does. Like, he, he's not doing it for the money or he doesn't have any bad intentions. He just wants to put on a great show and just wants to entertain anyone. Well, everyone, actually. And, like, you could still tell that he really does care for his friends and stuff like that. There are a few episodes, in fact. Um, a good example is probably in the third episode, Bear Left Then Bear Right where like you can tell he has this strong connection with Fozzie and you can tell he has a strong connection with everybody who's been working there. There have been a lot of times that that Kermit does show that he cares about his friends and stuff like that. So basically it is the same Kermit, but he's just doing his freaking job like he's supposed to. So I, I don't honestly really get the criticisms there. But yeah, this is the same Kermit. This is a good Kermit. However, there is one massive criticism that I do have, and it does really hinder the show, considering that it does try to hammer it in a lot. And the biggest problem that this show has is regarding how they handle the relationships. And I really do mean all of them. And it really is such a big problem. Uh, the, the relationships that they try to establish is um, Fozzie and Becky, which is pretty much the relationship between Fozzie Bear and a human girl. Uh, there is Gonzo being single in general, and for the longest time, uh, they had no mention of Camilla. Uh, there is also Sam the Eagle's crush on Janice, which, is, which feels completely out of the blue. And the biggest problem of them all is also Kermit and Denise. But here's the thing, is that they, it just feels like everything about it just doesn't work. Every, every single aspect does not feel like the Muppets. There's just nothing that works and it feels completely out of place. And that's kind of the biggest problem. Now, admittedly, the one that really does work in terms of the relationship and stuff like that is regarding Fozzie and Becky. Because in that one, they do explore around it more like they do show some of the ideas of what they have of like how like how how it's going in a relationship when things get bad when things get good and all that kind of stuff like that one at least kind of does work in a way however there are all the other ones like they fail miserably uh the fact that gonzo is single and without even a mention of camilla this just feels like it's out of context and it's out of consistency in terms of the Muppets in general. Because, like, 
Like I said, as a Muppet fan, I felt extremely annoyed in each episode when they talk about Gonzo being single and stuff like that, and no mention about Camilla. It's, o it's only until much later when they had to, you know, refix the series, and, like, that they, they had to bring up Camilla. And that was such a huge problem. I mean, my god. Like, it, le it this is one of those situations where they left in more questions than answers, and it just feels annoying. And honestly, just seeing Gonzo gloat about, oh, he wants to be single, it just feels so out of character. This doesn't feel like the Gonzo that we remember. If anything, this is not the Gonzo we all know and love. This is the Gonzo from frickin' Muppets from Space. And that's kind of a massive issue right there if you're gonna take elements from Muppets from Space. But yeah, and then there was also uh, Sam the Eagle and Janice. And this is a massive problem. I don't know why they decided to go with it. It just feels like filler. And like they only put it in just to put just to have like these crush gags and stuff like that. And it doesn't work because it feels so out of character for Sam the Eagle. Now, Jan like Janice, they just use her as the love interest, just walking around. That's fine. Like, uh, I, I don't really have much complaints with what they did with Janice. Uh, but with Sam the Eagle, they just use him as like the, like, just kind of the love, like, basically the lovebird, no pun intended. Like, just the guy who is trying his best to get, you know, to try to woo Janice and, like, is completely head over heels over, over her. But that's the biggest problem. It's Sam the Eagle. I mean, if they use Chip who to have a crush on Janice, then maybe it'll work. But everybody knows Sam the Eagle. This is the guy who loves America more than anything else. In fact, if Sam the Eagle has a crush, he needs to have a crush on America. And that's the biggest thing. Is the, like, why bring in Sam to love Janice? That makes no sense. It feels out of character. And the worst part is, is that they were going well with Sam. Like, there, there were some moments that it feels fine. He feels totally in character. They originally had him set to be like the guy in charge of censorship. That is fine. That's great. That's, you know, that's definitely Sam's character to keep the show clean and to have class and like to present the show properly and all that stuff. And like, you know, like he's anti-weirdo in a sense. Like that's totally Sam's character to be like the man in charge of censorship. But to have a crush on Janice and stuff like that, no, that doesn't work at all. Now, the thing is, is that, yeah, like, it did go a bit wonky during the first ten episodes there. But then, you would have the later six episodes. Now, as you guys may know, during that time, they kind of had a two-month hiatus where they had to really fix up a lot of elements in the episode. They pretty much take away all the stuff that didn't work, and then they just brought back, like, they brought in... A lot of stuff to fix it up and not only that but they also add in a lot of elements in order to to make it work and I will admit there are some stuff that did work um, one of the things that I said like Gonzo being single with no mention of Camilla they actually immediately brought her back like one episode uh, they they actually explained how, like that Gonzo broke up with Camilla and then they brought back Camilla. And like now we see Gonzo in a happy relationship with Camilla. That actually just took one episode. That's it. One episode to explain everything. How is that not hard to do? Now I did read that apparently, uh, like the original like the original idea of the show, they didn't want to add in elements of characters that don't talk in a sense. They don't, like, this is why you don't really see a lot of chickens or you don't see a lot of penguins in the show. That makes no sense. I mean, th that's one of the things that makes the Muppets the Muppets. You can't really take that out. It's like, why would, like, why would you even do that in the first place? Like, just put in Camilla. Like, you're taking away a lot of the consistency of the show. That's just stupid. So, Thankfully, they did fix that issue. And plus the fact, another thing that they actually did do is that they actually took away a lot of the relationship stuff. After the six episodes, they took away a lot of elements. They, they took away, like, a lot of the, the relationship problems. They took away, like, uh, like, Becky is actually out of the picture. Fozzie never mentions Becky again. 
Uh, there was also Sam the Eagle. Like, there was one episode, like, he's completely back to normal, but it doesn't look like they want to really get rid of the Janus Crush thing, so I don't know if they still want to keep that. Like, like it's something that they they hinted out at the uh, in the season finale. And uh, then there was also Kermit and Denise that they immediately fixed up. It's just like, okay, I know you guys don't like Denise, but, imme but don't worry, she's gone. She's out of the picture. Like, they immediately fixed those problems. And plus the fact that in there, the, one of the things that they also did, they also try to stay more true to The Muppet Show. What they basically did is that they even add in more sketches and stuff like that. Uh, they try to add in, like, some sketches, uh, especially in the season finale when they brought back elements like, uh, they had sketches like Veterinarian's Hospital, uh, The Swedish Chef, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew and Beaker. Uh, they, they also have, like, uh, sketches with special guest stars, like, with RuPaul, and, like, even musical moments with, uh, Joan Jett, uh, Jack White, and also, uh, Willie Nelson. So they made it more like The Muppet Show, and that definitely is interesting, I will say. But it is a bit inconsistent, I will say, compared to how, like, you know, the pro like, how the show is regularly going. Like, in episode 15, generally in Hospitable, that one is a lot more like the Muppet Show than anything else. It barely had a story, but, um, there are a few things, there are a few episodes, I will say, like, uh, their episode 11 Swine Song, and I believe Got Silk. That one actually does have a good mix of having some sketches at the end and also have a story in there so it definitely worked out and I will admit that it, it it went a lot better than the previous 10 episodes I will give it that however there is one thing though um, although that they got rid a lot uh, a lot of the problems they actually add in one problem or maybe two well depending okay one problem that is even worse than any of the other problems in the previous episodes and that is in the form of Pache. Not just Pache, but also uh, the network executive. Sometimes, like when she would come out. When, when she would come out sometimes. She only appeared in two episodes, but yeah, she is still a problem. Basically, they wanted to add in this new villain in here. Like, they, like they want to try to add in this villain to, you know, be the network executive to really threaten the show and, like, to really give, you know, to give the show some problems in order to make, you know, to give the show a story and stuff like that. And honestly, I feel like this is absolutely useless because this is the Muppets. They can get into their own shenanigans that would give the show problems and stuff like that. We don't need characters like Pache in order to screw things up. That and also Pache is one of the most hateable things that would ever come out of the Muppets. He truly is such a scumbag. And I know like that seems like the intentions, but he's a hateable scumbag that's absolutely pointless. It's like I said, like it's a simple solution. The Muppets can get in their own shenanigans that would ultimately, you know, lead to problems that they have to fix. They don't need this scum. They don't. They don't need this dick to come in and try to sabotage the show with all the random stuff. Especially the fact that, like, a lot of the ideas that he brings up, it's just stupid. It's like, I don't know if he's intentionally trying to shut down the show and stuff like that, but I don't know. It's like. What's what's this guy's deal? Now, I know at the end of uh, one of the ep like at the end of like episode 15, I believe, they pretty much got rid of him, like uh like they gave him a phone call from his dad and then he just eventually went off, but I don't know. I felt like it's too easy and if they are going to do a season 2, I don't know if they really are going to bring him back. And that is the one thing that I feel like it's unsure of. It definitely was one of the most unpleasant moments of the show, and I really do wish that they don't bring him back. Plus the fact that, actually in episode 12, um, they had Sam the Eagle come in and be like the censorship executive. Like, he actually fills in the role much better than like Pache or the network executive and stuff like that. So it's better off if we just have like Sam the Eagle do that job not be the villain but like to work on like you know the censorship and like 
you know, like, be an obstacle to tell Kermit what to do and what not to do. Again, not be the villain, but be a bit of an obstacle in a sense, if you get what I mean. Uh, but there is also one additional thing, and I just realized this. Um, when I was doing these Muppet vlogs, people have often been commenting me on this, and it does raise up a good point, and that is the big question, where the fridge is, Walter? And yeah, when you do think about it, like, Walter has not been present throughout this entire thing, and, you know, that is a, a bit of an inconsistency that they did forget to mention. Um, like, maybe eventually it'll happen, like, I talked to my folks about this, and it was actually my mom who brought this one great idea of, like, what they could possibly do, is that considering that they do bring in some special guest stars and stuff like that, um, maybe one day they'll actually bring in Jason Siegel and have Walter come in to do an appearance like what Robin did in one of the later episodes. So that could pretty much be an idea, so... I, I don't know what they did with Walter, that really does bring in a good question, but yeah, that does bring up a flaw in terms of its inconsistencies and stuff like that. Oh, and, and I do forget to mention as well, speaking of which, uh, regarding the special guest stars, some of which, I will admit, it's more of a mix. It's not like in the, in the previous Muppet shows, like in the Muppet series, where uh, when they do bring in a special guest star, they are prominently featured. There are some episodes, like with Mindy Kaling and Reese Witherspoon, they are, like, the special guest stars throughout the entire episode. But most of the time, they're just there for cameo appearances, and there are some, like, they could have done better with it. Some are memorable, and some are not, and some, like, it, it just feels like an entire waste, so... Um, I will admit that in terms of how they handle the special guest stars, that one is a lot more of a mix. Now, the one thing, this is gonna be a big discussion that I want to bring up for this one right here, is actually gonna be regarding the relationship of Kermit and Miss Piggy, and oh my god, this is such a big thing. This is pretty much the biggest campaign that ABC tries to do with the Muppets is the factor that Kermit and Miss Piggy broke up and that Kermit got a new girlfriend with Denise and stuff like that. My God, that campaign, let me tell you, that was really ineffective because of the one big problem. We all know for a fact that Kermit and Miss Piggy are going to get back together. There's no question about it. And like, honestly, it just, you know, it's just absolutely pointless. I've stated this before in the Muppet vlogs, that Kermit and Miss Piggy's relationship has always been on and off for years and stuff like that. Like, we've always seen Kermit and Miss Piggy break up, and eventually that they would get back together in some sense. It always happens. This is nothing new, to be honest. And also the factor that when Kermit is with Denise, it's just, it feels like a waste of time. Especially the fact that Denise is such a way, she's not even a character. That's the whole problem. She's not a character. She feels like a bland love interest that's just there for plot convenience. That's it. The uh, the writers, they didn't do anything with Denise. They don't make her like a legit character. They don't give her a personality like Miss Piggy. And that's one of the biggest things like why everybody's pretty much rooting for Kermit to get back with Miss Piggy is to get rid of this nobody pig so that Kermit can actually go with you know, the person who's been dating for, like, decades now, so... Oh, also, there is one more factor I would like to mention. Like, a lot of people might have forgotten this, but technically, Kermit and Piggy are actually married. Yeah, for those of you who haven't seen uh, Muppets Take Manhattan, it technically, in the context of the Muppets, they are married. So that's, that's pretty much the perfect example of how their relationship has been going everywhere. So there's no big surprise that Kermit and Miss Piggy's relationship has been like, you know, on and off. And this one, like, they try to make it this big deal that, like, they're no longer in a relationship. And then suddenly, in the late, in the last six episodes, they immediately ditched Denise. Like, they, they just took care of that problem. She appeared in one episode, and then suddenly, just step by step, it's like, and then Kermit's just there like, we broke up, that's it, and then, like, they finally made it so that they're back together. Well, almost. They're, like, they, they want to plan, like, another season where, 
Mer uh, Kermit and Piggy go to Thailand and then they're back together and all that kind of stuff. So like they want to try to do that. And uh, yeah, that's basically one of the, that's another really annoying thing is that they have to drag so long for the inevitable moment that we see Kermit and Piggy finally get together. So that's the thing. And that's another big issue with the show. It's the predictability. And it's worse that when it is a TV show that we got to wait every week for a little step for Kermit to get back to Miss Piggy and stuff like that. Now, in terms of the episodes themselves, now, if I have to go and pick the best and the worst episodes, I would have to say that the best episode that I could recall would probably be Going Going Gonzo. This is the one that they decided to go back to the roots of the Muppets, like the original Muppet show and stuff like that, and Gonzo decided that he wants to be a daredevil again. And like it definitely not only does it have like a lot of heart, but it's definitely a lot of fun to watch considering now that we see like N a Gonzo actually becoming the great Gonzo and it's such a great throwback to the original Muppets. And like I said, uh, this is another great example to show how Kermit is truly is like Kermit, you know, like we do see the kind heart hearted producer that really does care about his friends and stuff like that. So. Um, not only it has a lot of heart, but it also has a lot of laughs and a massive great throwback of like what the Muppets are. So this is definitely a great episode that stands as the Muppets. Uh, another episode I will say that is really good, if I would have to pick a second placer, would definitely have to be A Tale of Two Piggies. It does have a great message. It is another cute throwback to the original Muppets and stuff like that. It's, it's just like overall... This episode is actually a lot of fun and like and of course this is another throwback because finally they do explain what's going on with the relationship between Gonzo and Camilla. So like yeah the, the message there is a bit tedious like they really try to hammer it down but it definitely is a good episode and definitely a great second placer. Now if I do have to pick the worst episode of the bunch I would have to go hands down too hot to handler. I already mentioned that the biggest problem with the show is actually the relationships. That's the biggest issue in here. And this is an episode that's all about the relationships. And plus the fact that it's tangled with this unpleasant and really predictable plot that like a lot of TV shows use so many times that it just becomes tedious every time that it gets br brought up. And like they try to bring in like the relationships of like they try to establish the relationship of Denise and Kermit, which is a waste of time. They also try to establish the relationship between Becky and Fozzie. And then they try to bring in this new relationship with Chelsea Handler and Scooter for some reason. And that just like, it feels like it makes no sense. It's just unpleasant altogether. So yeah, overall, this was definitely the worst episode of the bunch. Uh, maybe like the first episode because like maybe a lot of people would say the first episode because yeah, like thinking about it now and how the show has been, uh, it did leave a bit of a bad first impression for many people. But with Too Hot for Handler, my god, that was... That was one that honestly I would say that it is kind of bad. So with all that said, if I do have to give a rating to all this, I would give season one of The Muppets a total of a 7 out of 10. And this is actually kind of interesting. And I did put a lot of thought about it regarding like how the whole season was in general. Now for the first 10 episodes with the issues that it got, I would give it a 6 out of 10. But with all the improvements that they have done in the later six episodes, I would give that an 8 out of 10. So when you do combine the two, it just rounds it out to a good 7. Now, is it the best uh, is it the best series of the Muppets that has ever been made? Absolutely not. This is this is by far like definitely inferior to stuff like the Muppet Show and also to like uh, some of the some of the movies like the Muppet movie, uh, Muppets Christmas Carol, The Great Muppet Caper, and all that kind of stuff. Like this is a bit inferior to even some of the uh, mu like recent Muppet movies like. Uh, the Muppets and uh, Muppets Most Wanted. I would argue that those were kind of better than, uh, than than this. Actually, come to think about it, 
Um, I would say it's actually equal to Muppets Most Wanted in a sense. Well, okay, well, take your pick. It's either as good as uh, Muppets Most Wanted or it's it's a bit worse. But actually, okay, actually, no, scratch that. Let me rephrase that. Like, if I do have to put in order, like, I, like it's kind of like Muppets Most Wanted and the Muppet series, they're close together. But if I have to put them like better or worse, like Muppets Most Wanted is one step better than the Muppet series. Uh, but I will say, like, yeah, it's not the best of, like, the Muppets that we have seen, but it's definitely not the worst. It is still enjoyable. It's definitely clever. It's definitely funny. Um, Story-wise and stuff like that, like, it definitely needs a lot of work, and especially, it definitely needs some work in terms of characterization. But it definitely nails it with a lot of the humor and stuff like that. And it does go into a lot of the Muppet antics, which does make it enjoyable. So overall, I have not regret my experience with the Muppets. And would I would would I like to see a season two come out? I would definitely say yeah, I would be down to see a season two of it. Considering that now, like now that we have been we're up to like the improvements. Um, I would like to see how much more have they improved, like, uh, what else can they, f can they fix and stuff like that. Maybe they did actually take out Pache and stuff like that. Uh, maybe we'll see more of the relationships fix up. Maybe we'll see the characters act more as the characters themselves. Maybe we'll see more of old and new sketches that the, will, like, will all enjoy and even love and stuff like that. So... Maybe we'll see more of the Muppets being the Muppets and stuff like that. So I would definitely be down to see that. So that's pretty much going to be it for this review of the Muppets. So thank you guys so much for watching. And um, hopefully we will join together again into the second season of the Muppets. Maybe we'll just have to wait and see how that goes. Or if not, well then I hope you have enjoyed your time with the Muppet vlogs that I've done with the new Muppets. It definitely is a blast. And um, I am definitely will continue this with the Muppet show. So, I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching, and until next time, see you later, dudes!